All right, so the last couple of years, you've been hearing a lot about weight loss drugs. The two most common or popular are really Azempic, uh, Majaro, and Wigobi. There's a new one that just came out. I wanted to do a video that goes over some basic explanation of how they work, their indications, as well as what's, I think, best practice to how to take it and what are the side effects. These are approved for diabetes and weight loss is considered off-label for some of them. Diabetic patients have insulin resistance. If you're a diabetic, it means your sugar's up because your insulin doesn't work so well. Insulin works to lower glucose. So they came out with these drugs that help lower your glucose, great. What they found out was that when you took these drugs, there was also some weight loss associated with them. And what they did was they basically studied them separately for weight loss, they found that they worked, and then they rebranded the name. So for example, semi-glutide is the compound that is the same as Ozempic. Ozempic's the commercial name, but it's labeled for use under the commercial label Wigobi. I know it's a little confusing, but basically every time you get a new indication with the FDA, you have to have a new name. Just like Manjaro's for diabetics, there's a new compound called Zepbound, which is basically the weight loss version of Tercepitate, which is the Manjaro. Okay. Sorry if I just confused you. So these medications came out, they were for diabetics, you lost some weight. How do they work? Two mechanisms, GLP-1 and GIP. What those two hormones do is they increase insulin secretion and they lower glucagon. <laughs> Let's just say that the end product is lower sugar, okay? They also have an effect on gastric emptying, meaning they slow down the way your stomach moves. And there's also thought that there's a central mechanism, meaning that there's something happening up in centrally in some part of your brain where it decreases uh, satiety or increases satiety and you're less hungry. When they studied them in the clinical trials, the two main clinical trials, if you really want to go into the weeds, are sustain and surpass. Sustain was for um, Azempic, Zerpass was for um, Manjaro. So what those two trials showed was that terzepatide, which is Manjaro, is better. More weight loss, and lower A1C. A1C is a measurement in the blood to tell you how long or how high your glucose has been over three months. So terzepatide, Munjaro, works better. That one works with two mechanisms, GLP-1 and GIP. Semiglutide just works on GLP. Again, it's a little bit of minutia, but for those who are really interested, that's the mechanism. Okay, great. So now we have these compounds. We know one works a little bit better with the other. We know that during the clinical trials, on average, a patient lost somewhere between 10 to 15% of their body weight with Ozempic and a little bit more with Manjaro. Okay. So now what? Now what do we do? Should everyone take these drugs? Are they dangerous? Are there side effects? What do I think are best practices? So I think this is where it really is important. What You're not looking for weight loss. That's not the goal. The goal should be fat loss. And that's an important distinction because when the FDA does these trials, they're looking at their main outcome measure is weight loss when they should be looking at fat loss. There is a subgroup of patients in these trials who have DEXA scans. DEXA scan is a scan that scans you, your body, and it tells you how much muscle you have and how much fat you have. So really the best thing to do is to get a DEXA before and after. Some patients got a DEXA in these trials, a very small subgroup, and it was actually not good what we found out. What we found out was a lot of the weight that they were losing was muscle or lean body mass. I'll throw a question at the audience, right? Let's just say you get on a Zampic, you lose 20 pounds, and 15 of that is muscle, right? Are we really making you better? Like, are you really healthier? Are you in a better place metabolically? Are you have more metabolic health? I would argue no, right? If, you, if you're losing 20 pounds and 15 is muscle, you get off the drug, you start eating, are you gonna gain weight easier than you did before or is it gonna be harder for you to gain weight? It's gonna be easier. And when you look at these trials and you see what happens when patients come off, how much weight are they gaining? Almost 100%, it's a crazy number, right? So if someone's losing 20 pounds and it takes them a year on the drug and they get off the drug, what you see in the trials is that they'll gain 18 or 17 back, that's most of it. So that should be alarming for some people. And I'm not saying don't use the, the drugs. I'm just saying you should be more informed before you take them. All right, so what are the best practices? What do I think if you really want to jump one of these meds, what should you do? Number one, get a DEXA scan before you start. That's a simple test to do. Google DEXA scan near me, get it done. Number one. Number two, 
you got to preserve muscle, right? You're not going to, your muscle loss is not going to be zero, but do a three to one ratio. So for every four pounds you lose, make one of them muscle, right? Because if you do that, that means 25% is muscle loss, which is okay. So how do you do that? You got to do resistance training. You got to lift weights to some degree and you got to keep your protein up. What's the right number? About 1.6 per kilogram. So let's just say you weigh uh, 150 pounds. You have to eat approximately 100 grams of protein a day. Now that might sound complicated or a lot, but you know what? It's the best way to do it. It's really best practices to do these things so that if you are losing weight, most of the weight you're losing is fat and you don't put yourself in a worse metabolic condition after than you were before, right? That's not good. You don't want to go on one of these compounds lose 20 pounds of muscle and then I call them metabolic cripples. You don't want to become a metabolic cripple where you do this three or four times, you go your diet and next thing you know, you look at food and you're suddenly gaining weight. So that's what you don't want to do. Side effects, the side effects are mostly have to do with the mechanism of how they work, right? So if this is going to slow down gastric emptying, and make food come out of your stomach. It's gonna take longer for food to come out of your stomach and go into your small intestine. You could get nauseous, you can vomit, you can get abdominal pain. Those are the most common symptoms. A way to avoid those is by a very slow ramp up, meaning you just go up slowly on, on the compound. So it might take you two months to get to the max dose. Additionally, if you have a history of thyroid cancer, you wanna avoid it, or pancreatitis, you wanna avoid it.